Yo, Prince Ali, you tune in to Distortion to Static. Don't touch that dial. That's what's up. So uh, you got a new album. Yeah. Uh, it's your second album, right? Uh, yes. First one was um, uh, was a mixtape, you know, for lack of a better word, that was that had all original production on it, except one song, which was kind of a, a bootleg instrumental type thing, where okay. we kind of, you know. Uh, did what has become the mixtape thing where people grab you know other people's instrumentals mm -hmm. so I, I flipped the Van Hunt song okay. you know but other than that it was a all original music and that's called Corner Ensemble Defar is on that Opio's on that uh, Rocka's on that from uh, Dilated so uh, we did that we're pushing that project uh, kind of perked the interest uh, some people over at uh, Hieroglyphics Imperium and uh, we linked up and put our curbside service through them yeah, yeah. So when you say curbside service, it's not like being independent now, like serving it yourself or uh, what? break that down for me. You know, it's funny that that title just kind of came to me because it just seemed appropriate as far as like, you know, this whole street element and the street thing that we have in hip hop, which is, you know, natural to, to hip hop and just bringing it to the people, bringing it to the streets. You know, your car breaks down. You, you need some help. You know, the curbside service, we come and bring it. <laughs> bring it right to you you know and okay. so it's uh truly you know organic hip-hop you know and, and we're here to serve the people so we serve in the heads you know and uh those are the folks that have kind of been in a certain way left behind uh in, in as far as where the state of hip-hop is right now and so you know we're bringing it straight to you now now i, I listen to the album yes. and you got a. Uh like a, a classic hip-hop sound you know you're from the bay area and uh the bay area right now is known for a different type of music uh explain a little bit about your sound it's funny because as much as we have that uh, the quote-unquote hyphy element here the bay area as far as its racial makeup its interests its 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 religions it's kind of like life theology is it's very mixed. It's a, it's a it's a large community of a bunch of different ideas and peoples and people and styles, and so I think my take on that is more of a reflection of of the head entity that lives out here. You know, the hip hop head, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And because um, it's funny, because I've heard him say it, uh, Talib. Uh, I heard uh, um, uh, uh, Pharaoh Monch say it. Uh, where they come out here and a part of their career they're able they're able to sustain themselves off of the sales and support they get from the Bay Area and it's funny to me that if you listen to you know our drive time radio or even our quote unquote independent hip hop that comes on at night you know on your major radio entities it doesn't reflect that Bay Area sound the the Hyro offshoots and things mm -hmm. of that nature who have all come out of here and so I feel like that that my music is more in the lineage of of, of the hieroglyphic camp you know, in a sense of, of God willing, cutting edge, you know, uh, loops and even with the live instrumentation, that's mm -hmm. part of it as well. It comes more so from that family, you know, than it does so much from the hyphy offshoot, which is one branch of hip hop that lives out here, you know. And so uh, it's funny that it's hard that artists find their support, your Talib, your comments, your most deaf, most deaf is out here every month almost. And they're, they're able to sustain themselves and have a huge following out here. But the actual support that Bay Area artists that would fit in that category of your quote unquote conscious MCs, for lack of a better word, that... Um, it's funny that there's not more of that coming out here. You got a couple. You got your your Zion eyes, and you got you know, of course, your Hyro your Hyro cats, and and then you got your more abstract kind of Kev Choice type thing. But mm -hmm. it uh it could definitely live and breathe out here much more than what it does, and it should, you know, because uh, it it's more of a reflection of so many different type of people that live out here, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, so you you're you're a hip hop artist, but you're also a lyricist. You know what I mean? I see that you sounds like you really take time in writing your lyrics yeah. like that uh that song uh, war, war wounds like yeah. the song war wounds now yeah. can you touch on that a little bit because that song is like it's got like a deep meaning to it yeah. you know war wounds when i write i basically do first thing i do is i put a bunch of headings on the top of my page so bismillah ir rahman rahim alhamdulillah like all these little prayers at the top and then after that i have to trust you know, it's basically how I approach it to where I just let the song come to me. And what came to me in that song was I was able to touch on on what happens in war, someone who has to go off to war, but at the same time, you're dealing with the storyline of, of a relationship, of someone having love in his life and going off and coming back and infidelity and all these kind of things that kind of 
collage into one song, you know, and uh, and so I, just bringing in that human element, it ends up being able to like it, it, it's not so much about oh war is bad and war, you know, we should have peace, but you actually end up having to listen to a journey of someone having love in his life and losing love and getting into stuff, some stuff that's not cool, and and someone else's heart getting broken in it. So it's just in a certain way, it was like the. It's an important song because it rounds out the album to me because you can bust and you can do all these things, you know, and, 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 and drop lyrics here and there. But to be able to carry a subject, you know, and a story all the way through mm -hmm. is is something that can bring a healthy balance to songs, especially in a day and a time when your hip hop is it seems to be often about, you know, you know, breaking other MCs down when I would like to have a balance in my work, you know, to where it be, I touch on karma on the album. Um, I touch on uh, um, uh, 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 just a, a bunch of different subjects and kind of things that I try to approach to bring about a balance and experience because I feel like I'm a relatively balanced person. So the music should reflect that, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just about, you know, uh, uh, breaking MCs down or, or how dope you are as a lyricist or chasing this girl or that girl that there, there should be a balance I feel like in in an album you're giving them a book you're giving them a yeah. film you're giving yeah. them an experience a piece of your life you know so okay yeah. that's what's up I, I, and you got that other song uh, Stay Chop yeah. and you got the is that a live band they got the live instrumentation on that one yeah Stay, Ch Stay Chopped is definitely has uh, it, it was it was done by Destruments a live band and uh they how they work though they break it down where they're in the studio and they chop themselves up you know what I mean so so they'll they'll do the drums or whatever and, and loop those drums and then put keys on it and put the bass on it and all these elements and add okay. other stuff to it so there's that element as well you know to the piece to where I feel like that that kind of gives the album its own unique kind of sound as yeah, well yeah. and I'm able to be inspired like by them yeah, yeah 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 because look we grew up in a time where you know hip hop came out of need, all styles and things like that first are developed out of a need, and you had there was a there was a time when, you know, these kids running around in the streets of the Bronx or whatever, and hip hop trickled over to the West and through you know all mm -hmm. these places to where, cats were making stuff off of the instruments that they had. They didn't play keys, they didn't play the piano, they didn't play, play bass and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. They maybe didn't have access to that in, those instruments. So it became taking James Brown's band mm -hmm. or, or you know, whomever and, and looping that up. And that was your band, you know, yeah, so yeah. that was the DJing was your instrument, you know, and it and is an instrument. Yeah. And so when we now we've grown up, hip hop is 30 years old to where you got people who were who were, you know, five years old when some of the stuff was going on and learned how to play instruments and so are able to be the Jay Dillers who you know take a loop and then add his own drums to it actually playing drums you know what I'm saying so uh, it's it's a real blessing when you're able to hook up with live musicians of any sort or any camp you mm -hmm. know to be able to like round the album out yeah yeah you know and so it's a it's a it's, it's a real blessing it's funny and that's something too that's always kind of existed in Bay Area hip hop or has for a while that, that, live. that live instrumentation yeah. where at the time maybe your east coast ear would be like that feels a little overproduced you know what i mean but it was that you know too short whomever was hooking up with somebody and having yeah. somebody lay down some some live bass on yeah. it or whatever and now that's a little more uh that that's more welcomed you know in 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 the family of hip-hop now definitely, you know definitely. so yeah, yeah yeah now um if you had a choice of like to make like a super group like like the dream team all-star group like lyricists, DJs, and whatnot, Ooh. what have you. Who who would you put in, put in that group with you? Wow, man, that's a phenomenal question. I'm not ready for that one. <laughs> Woo, man. Well, you know, I have. Sometimes I don't agree with some of the things he says, you know. But what's beautiful about that is that that's somebody's. And uh, there's no MC where I agree with everything he says, so I, I should start out by saying that. Yeah. But I really love. Nas's ability to put together a song, you know, and to 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 carry out to to carry out stories and albums and and in a way where you don't even know where his rhyme is falling, you know, that I've learned so much from Nas, you know, but I would I would put Nas in there. Mm -hmm. I I'll give you I'll say I'll give about 5 MCs that okay, I think yeah, are That's cool. I think Nas is a phenomenal MC. I think Planet Asia is the most under, underrated MC if not in the West Coast in the country. You know, really, uh, if he was from New York and this was 1994, he would have he would have been up there with anybody, you know, in my opinion, you know, casual hasn't gotten his due. I don't think as well, uh, who who will bring it to anybody at any time. Um, 
I definitely, and it's hard because he's out there so much, and so you know, I'm almost supposed to say this as an underground head or whatever, but I really respect and love Jay Z's consistency and his, and his ability to write a rhyme without even writing a rhyme. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, there's something about that to me. Um, I love Doom. Yeah. Uh, man, I love, I love, I love Plug Two, Dave, Dove. You know, True Goy. I, yeah. I mean. It's that's such a, a tough question, you know, but and I know I'm gonna go home and think of about 30 other people. <laughs> yeah, um, and then also Pharaoh, you know, oh, okay. producers wise, who I really respond to. Mm -hmm. God bless the dead. I think Dilla, if if he isn't the greatest producer of all time, he is he is in the top three, you know. Um mm -hmm. Love Madlib, you know, Alchemist, uh Primo, yeah. you know. Pete Rock, yeah, you know, like yeah. you can kind of the list kind of goes on, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, uh, you know, and and then just it. So that's kind of like my my scope of yeah. people that I kind of like find, you know, appealing to me and uh, could listen to all day, basically, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know. That's what's up. Yeah. Now the era hip hop that you came up in, that I came up in, we came up in. Yeah. Now. Uh, do you feel it coming back, like with artists like you mm -hmm. and uh, the stuff that uh, Kanye is doing and uh, other artists? Do you feel like it's becoming more popular again? It's coming back. That's a another great question. Um, I I don't necessarily feel like hip hop is coming back. What I do feel like is it, is it's becoming more of a boutique art form hmm. in a way in <laughs> which jazz has carried through. Yeah. There was a time when when it was a it was a regular thing to go see your Herbie Hancock's or your John Coltrane. And there's a pocket when like these cats were around and it was a big deal and they could draw a crowd, you know. But now it's like if they're at Yoshi's, that's the spot where you yeah. can go see them. Yeah. They're not at ten different spots in the city of San Francisco. There's not a whole jazz movement in West Oakland that there used to be. So I think hip hop is, is in the same way. That's why these tours don't exist like they used to. Even those underground tours that used to mm -hmm. exist where you have, you know, your high rolls and your living legends and, you know, maybe Black Star headlining or De La headlining or Spit Kicker, like all these type of things that used to pop off to where I feel like what's happening is people are knowing about Nas because of his last album. But they're going to those those people who are 15, 18 years old. They're gonna hit 25 and 30, and their version of digging is gonna stumble across like live at the barbecue and listening to Main Source on some like, oh, check yeah, this, yeah. like how we'll stumble across an early OJ's album or whatever, you know. Yeah. And so, I feel like there's a few, there's a, it's the last of the Mohicans time, right. you know, and you know, it's about it, it's getting back to you know the people that are surviving, not only have to do it because they love it, but you gotta really you got to really hang in there with it because it's a very difficult time in hip hop because there's so much information. And, 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 and when I was in school, we called it info glut, you know, to where there's so much information to where there's so many choices. You walk in a shoe store, you see 50 different, a hundred different pairs of shoes. Yeah. You can't see any of the shoes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's why it becomes important to have your shoe up in the front of the store because those are the ones that are going to stand out and those are the ones that are going to get bought. But you can have the dopest pair of shoes tucked behind the back, but people might not even see them or notice them because there's so many choices, you know. And uh, that's the time. We, we're suffering from the convenience of the Internet right now and that it's in and the, the convenience of the Internet, the, the convenience of, of our society is actually almost sucking the lifeblood out of the artist that that actually inspire you to go buy this music you know and so we're in it's this interesting conundrum right now that we're living in you know yeah 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 so you got uh keith murray on the album uh you got any other special guests on there who's on there with you um, and uh producers oh yeah on on curbside service we got keith murray planet asia casual uh uh pep love rocka iris science you know um it's 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 a beautiful thing i might be missing somebody but um and at the same time there's it's an album that has about that has about 19 tracks on the 18 tracks so you're not inundated with guest stars if anything it's kind of a breath of fresh air when you hear a guest star because uh um i feel like my, my lyricism is relatively dense you know and so when with that hope it's something that I think that you can listen to over time in the same way, you know, I listen to Liquid Sword still. Mm -hmm. I listen to Illmatic still uh, uh, because I'm able to still get things from it because it wasn't just all served up to me 
on the plate where I have to listen and grow with it. So uh, it's got a nice scope of, of, of artists on there that I, I feel like is uh, is uh, a great kind of a renaissance uh, in, in hip hop and where we're at right now because those are the people who I grew up respecting and responding to and to be able to to kind of hold court with them on my own album is truly like a dream realized you know sure. yeah sure. yeah and as well we're working high roll oh, doing your man. thing you got your uh video up on bet now yeah, yeah, you're doing yeah. your thing man yeah. uh you got any more videos coming up uh like like you just kind of mentioned uh which i know you guys been uh spinning the major so thank you very much i, I really appreciate that that's got keith murray on it it's got um uh, uh, gosh, Keith Murray has got Planet Asia Casual on that, and of course myself. And we just shot uh, the Path, which is mixed with another song called Honor Code. Honor Code's a solo song, but the Path has Rock of Irish Science on it from Dilated People. And so, uh, so that's what's coming out next. And in that, we got a, we had a couple of guest appearances. You know, okay. people drop in just you know up in the video. You know, from Hiro. So. Peace to Tajay and A Plus and, and Festo D for showing up. Nobody from the camp as well. So uh, you know, it's it's a beautiful thing, man. I'm very humbled by that that connection and linking with Hiro at this point because uh, they're the brothers who kind of like wrote the manual, you know, for for what a what an MC is, the archetype of a, uh, archetype of an MC uh, coming out from this area, you know, because especially when they came into the game and you look back on uh, uh, at Dale and what he was able to accomplish in the whole hieroglyphics camp, mm -hmm. which in a sense you had your living legends of people inspired by that at that time, you know, the West coast in general, wasn't necessarily respected as MCs. We were looked at as rappers, you know, but as MCs, like lyricists, they propelled us right away to the top of the game, you know, and even, you know, seeing them on, on, on the tribe cover and things of that nature, I felt like I was on the cover, you know, because it was like home, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? So, you know, it's a real blessing ha having been able to to hook up with them and have their support, man. Those brothers are truly have embraced me as family, you know, and uh, supported me 100%. Anytime I want to get down with them on a song or vice versa, you know, mm -hmm. it's been a really beautiful thing, man. So, you know, yeah, I'm very grateful. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you got your own website and uh, yes. CDs and all that out. Yes. Uh, can you tell the people where we can locate you? Hit me up on MySpace. You know that's the that's the call of the day, right? <laughs> uh, at Ali the Prince. Uh, yeah, MySpace backslash Ali the Prince. Uh, I'm also on the Hieroglyphics MySpace. You could hit, uh, hit me up there. Um, so uh, yeah, you know, keep it simple. But check me out there, man. And uh, here's some more music. We got some other things coming out. Uh, I just did a track with uh, Steel uh, from uh, Coco Brothers and and UG from Cellar Dwellers and Casual as well. You know, uh, did something with Killer Priest recently. You know, so okay. you know, we just trying to you know keep building. About to start working on the next album. You know, keep it moving, staying motivated, and. Uh, you know, saying my piece, you know, yeah. getting my two cents in, man. So all the supporters appreciate it. So, you know, keep copping the album, you know. We appreciate it. Every penny, every every show of love, everybody that comes out to the shows, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Prince Ali, you know what I'm saying, man. out Thank here. for having me, y'all. Yeah, man. I really appreciate it, man. Thank hey, you. Stay tuned. Pick up this album, y'all. It's hot. I think I had yeah. to pick up right now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so uh, check us out, distortionestatic.com. Find all the exclusive interviews. You can contact him and us, and uh, that's how we doing it. 2008, y'all.